Thank you. So good afternoon and welcome uh, to this session today on uh, innovation in the world of hyperscale storage. My name is Unmesh Kulkarni, and I work as a senior director of product line management at Seagate, focusing on hyperscale and cloud segments. So today, we are going to talk about three important things. Initially, we are going to look at some of the trends in storage, particularly in storage in the cloud. We're going to talk about some of the devices and component choices that cloud providers can make to actually build the cloud that works for everybody and scales. And then finally, something really, really important, we are going to talk about some challenges that we, as the cloud industry, face. And I'm going to be very, very straightforward and transparent and candid. And we are going to uh, look at these challenges. We are going to see how we can resolve uh, and overcome these challenges together through collaborative innovation so the growth in cloud continues to happen. So let's dive in. But before we do that, a quick shameless plug. Uh, you probably know Seagate as a hard disk manufacturer, having shipped 2 billion uh, units of hard disk. Obviously, you know Seagate. You probably equate Seagate with hard disks. But there's more to it. Uh, to more to Seagate than hard disks. We also have an extensive SSD portfolio. We have uh, one of the world's greatest supply chain in the, in the industry, and we also have great IP in storage in particular. So whatever we are saying here has a solid foundation both in terms of industry you know, presence as well as technology capability. Let's take a step back and look at what's happening in the world today in storage. Right. Today, you are constantly hearing about data explosion. Last year, 2016, the world generated a raw amount of about 16 zettabytes. You see this is data from an IDC sponsored study 2013. And since you awesome folks are here, I'm going to share some unique information that will be published in a few months. 2025, we are looking at 163 zettabytes of raw data. So in about nine years, 2016 to 2025, data is exploding 10 times. About 40% of the data is actually actionable. You can run machine learning on it, big data on it. You can do some really useful stuff with 40%, that's 65 zettabytes of data. It's 2025. Right? So humongous amount of data growing really fast, and we are falling short of places to store the data. Investments in storage components, investment in storage in general has been reducing to or is not catching up with the explosion of data. So where is this data going? Back in 2010, the world was very different. Look at this inside circle the red circle inside, 65%, almost two-thirds of the data was on PC and related storage equipment. Today, the world is about halfway split, but in three years from now, it will be exactly the opposite. Two-thirds of the total data will be on non-PC storage. It's close to 70% of the data is, is, not, is outside, of the, outside of the PC. And a big part of it is what we call as enterprise data. And we'll see soon that most of it is shifting from the endpoints, from the laptops and the desktops to the cloud. Right? So machine learning, big data, IoT, all of those things that we learned today, you know, Steve said today morning, every company is a data company. So everybody generating huge amount of data, and most of the data ends up in the cloud. Where does it end up? Seagate ships about 70, 80 exabytes a quarter. This is FY16, which is like end of June last year. So about 250 to 300 exabytes. The industry, uh, we are about half the industry, so about 300. Uh, 600 is the total number of exabytes we, sh we saw sh being shipped. That includes SSDs and hard disks. And 90 of those exabytes were in the cloud, 90 of 600. Pretty significant. But nothing as compared to what you're going to see just three years from now. Out of about 1,100 to 1,200 exabytes that we will see shipped, about 440 exabytes will be in the cloud. That's humongous. 
this amazing once in a lifetime kind of growth that we are seeing here. And if you go back a slide, those blue tall bars, those are what we call as mission critical or near line drives. Uh, sorry, uh, business critical or near line drives. So that's where most of those data points are sitting. So in a way, the data, if it's close to the CPU, it's playing and it's working, right? It could be in memory, it could be in cache, and then if it's resting, it is on typically a business critical hard disk. And that we, our, our study says that even nine years from now, 20, 25-ish, we will still have more than half of this data actually residing on near line drives. So drives aren't going away. In fact, there is huge amount of data that's going into magnetic disks even in the next 10 years or so. So how do you actually choose the right kind of component? How are cloud providers of today choosing the right component for their infrastructure? On the left-hand side, we see the use cases of real-time computing and transaction processing. So you are essentially you know, trading systems, your online databases. Those kind of applications typically are using, of course, in memory, like HANA, we are looking at OLTP, RDBMSs, and SSDs <coughs> to a certain extent. As you go into the middle, that is where your IOPS are still important, but you're processing huge amount of data, big data, looking at streaming data, you're looking at content, and uh, you know, CDNs, for example, and we still see a split there between SSDs, larger and larger SSDs, and some relatively small capacity in your line drives. We're talking about two terabytes, four terabytes, six terabyte drives there. And now, on the right side, on your right, that is the data archival and data storage. So once you're done with using the data, typically you're not accessing it as frequently, the data goes to rest, it's stored, or even archived, and most of that data is where the exabytes are, and that is mostly today, and in near future, going to be on the near line hard disks. So we are going to talk a little bit more about innovation that we are seeing in this space. Uh, Seagate obviously has components and solutions in all these spaces, so we continue to push the envelope on every parameter that is really important for you as a customer of the cloud solution. So if you're a cloud services provider, what really matters to you? You care about scale. By definition, it's hyperscale. You care about capacity and, and cost, which are tightly correlated with each other. You care about the systems being there and performing when you need them, the performance part of it, the availability and reliability part of it, and of course you want it all packaged in a really secure manner. The security and standards compliance, uh, all of those things are, are really, really critical. So we are going to talk a little bit about each of those and what's, what's happening in the industry today. Let's start with the first one, which is the capacity. As, you, as most of you know, the industry measures capacity in terms of you know, aerial density. How much data can you pack in smallest amount of space, right? Uh, when I was a kid or you know, during my lifetime, we have grown from a, a, a few paltry kilobits or even lower per square inch to last year, so you get demonstrating two terabits per square inch. Two terabits per square inch. That's a million times improvement in uh, a couple of decades, three decades time. It's humongous. Right? And what it is driving is actually what we are seeing today with social explosion, right? with search, with all kinds of applications that are available to us, often you know, at a very, very low direct costs at least. So a big foundation of that is this explosion in aerial density that Seagate and its you know, hard disk competitors have driven in this industry. Let's talk a little bit about cost. So yes, of course, as you pack more and more bits in the you know, square inch, the costs go down, but that's not all. We are actually also improving the features. Helium fill drives, you know, better performance, better workload ratings, better mean time between failures. All of those features are coming at an increasingly lower cost to us, right? And that's amazing. And then, of course, there is the power. Today, if you are a hyperscale player, a big part of your cost and concern 
is power. So the power consumption on a drive is going down with the development of new innovative techniques in the hard disks. Let's talk a little bit about performance. Take a hard disk. As you pack more and more data inside it, the total amount of I.O. it can handle actually is relatively speaking flat. It does not go, it hasn't improved a million times or so in the last 20 years. In fact, it hasn't really moved that much either. So now, as you build data centers which have exabytes of data, and you have components which have 10 terabytes, we are in a situation where the total number of IOs inside and out of the disks is starting to become a constraint. It's not a big problem yet. We haven't hit the wall, but we are kind of getting close to there. So we are developing newer techniques that we'll talk about to address some of the IO constraints that's, that hard disks have. It's a good time, good time for me to quickly introduce that here at this OCP, we are introducing our 12 terabyte enterprise capacity drive. This is the industry's largest nearline drive. So it has, it helps you pack 20% more petabytes in a single rack. It does it all with one of the best power and weight specifications. And it is driving uh, a performance, the IO that we talked about, in a, in a much better way than the past drives did. So every step, last year we did the 10 terabyte, this year it's 12, you know, very soon we will be talking about 16, and by 2020, we are committed to doing a 20 terabyte drive. We are, our CEO recently spoke about that, right? So going from 10 in 2016 to 20 terabyte drive in 2020, what's making that possible? It's the technologies like Hammer, heat-assisted magnetic recording, HDMR beyond that. So today we are already reaching or trying to get to the limits of two terabits we will be talking about five, which potentially can actually pack maybe even 30 TBs in a single drive. That's what we are looking at. And that erodes the cost of all these cloud services for all of us. Supply and quality, you want to be working with a vendor that has a global footprint, resiliency built into its operations, right? So it's important to kind of work with vendors, work with component providers which have you covered irrespective of the situation, which are very transparent and which are very careful about the quality and transparent about any problems that they might, might have, and will work with you to solve problems that get more and more intense as we try to pack more and more performance in smaller and smaller racks, right? So uh, it's, a, it's an ecosystem. It's the hard disk providers, it's the cloud builders and the ODMs, and it's of course the providers who are running all of these systems together in, uh, at, at exabyte scale. So it's all the three components kind of really coming together to make it work for all of us. Quickly touching on security, it's really important. Uh, I'm going to talk about you know, some of the security features later on and how it, it really should drive some innovation but let's talk about being able to configure the drives in the field. Let's talk about key management on the drive. So there are a lot of things that are happening in the, at the drive level to give you enhanced security. If you are a cloud provider, would you not like to have the facility that says, if there is a smash and grab, if you know, I, I discard a drive or if someone runs away with a drive, they can't really access any data on it because it's cryptographically encrypted and secure, so if it's out of the system, nobody can read it. That facility is already built into the drive. And you know, as you build cloud infrastructure, as you evaluate your solutions, you should take benefit of these newer features that, are, we, are, that we are building into this. There's a lot on security, and you know, we are short on time, so I'm going to go ahead and quickly summarize. On performance side, we are looking at multi-actuator solution. So essentially, having multiple paths of processing inside a drive for I.O. And we start with two actuators, so there's a dual actuator start. We are looking at Helium, which was released last year. We are looking at uh, Hammer, which, as I said, is, is coming in the next three odd years, uh, eventually getting to HDMR. And right now, we already have some of the SMR solutions out in the market. So you will see the envelope on the five dimensions that I mentioned being pushed simultaneously to get faster, be better, and less expensive systems for all of us.
if you have control over your stack, you can actually drive much more optimization. So we see, in general, cloud providers, you know, large hyperscale players, uh, new technology companies, kind of really staring at this big problem. Should I build or should I buy? Should I go to public infrastructure? Should I build my own? And we see companies, obviously, uh, taking either of the two paths, you know, sometimes a little bit of both. And there is obviously no single, real, perfect best solution for everybody. But there are situations and, and things that you have to evaluate, especially at the device level, at the component level, when you make those decisions. So if you are, for example, a, a provider that has great engineering talent, that is willing to control their own stack, then you can take benefit of things like SMR and drive more and more density on a drive. So you can take benefit and get down the cost curve much faster. You can also <clears throat> you know, trade off certain things with respect to CapEx, OpEx, by choosing an AL drive versus a Helium drive, for example. So those are the options, and I implore you to understand those options in detail, to work with your builder, to work with Seagate, and, you know, other players in the industry to find the right solution. It can save you millions, but it can, more than that, it can save you really critical time to market for your solutions. Now I want to draw your attention to those three bullets on the right side. This is a little contentious. This is very interesting. So we look at cloud and we see the demand on, on the components and we see that it's very, very lumpy, right? So what's happening right now is because it is growing up and down and it's kind of really um, so new and so innovative that sometimes we don't seem to have enough control over what's happening there. So the demand planning is very, very hard to do. And what does it do? It drives the cost for us as component manufacturers. It drives the cost for our consumers, the service providers of cloud, the hyperscale people, right? So more attention we put into planning of demand and smoothening the demands, having visibility and sharing that information, the better it is for not just the device manufacturers and component players, but also for the providers and the end customers for all of us. There's a similar issue with security. Security, absolutely critical. We don't, nobody wants to you know, have their private data out you know, in, in the news or in the hacker hands, whatever. So some of our players, some of our customers will say, yes, we will never let a drive go out of our data center. So if there is a drive that has, you know, that's beyond its life or you know, potentially, um, having a problem, it's just going to crush it. That's called virtual returns, right? Now, I grew up in India, and some of the first experiences I have with technology are the systems that I built with my, you know, with my own hands through some second-hand components. It pains me to see that a really perfectly working drive or a potentially perfectly working drive is just being crushed for some operational convenience. Now, there might be really good cases and times where you need to do that, but there is a cost associated with that, right? There's a cost to us as a manufacturer of that drive if half of those drives could be perfectly fine. There is a cost for you as a hyperscale player because some part of the cost has to be passed on to the customers, right? So we as an industry are making it more expensive for ourselves by going in with things like virtual returns. I think OCP as a de facto standards body should and can handle these problems together. Can we devise some cryptographic solutions where you can wipe the drive off before it leaves the data center so nobody can read it ever, even if you can actually get your hands on the physical media, right? We have some technology that can do that, that can save cost for us as an industry together. We can eliminate cost in the system if we collaborate on those things. That brings me to the last point, which is trust and collaboration. Secrecy is the keyword in hyperscale, right? We don't want to let people walk into our data centers. We don't want to share logs. We want to be kind of really, really protective about our data, even the metadata and the logs. And that's great. But if we can figure out ways to safely communicate the information that's needed to do failure analysis, to understand the operating environments of the drives, of the systems, we can actually reduce the failures. We can eliminate a few significant percentages of those failures, increasing reliability of our systems, right? Increasing the 
the efficiency of our systems, reducing cost, and we can then successfully lower our cost, but also pass on those costs to our customers. That's what innovation should do. Innovation should make us better. It should make us go faster, and it should lower the cost for everybody. Seagate can do that. Seagate will help our, our hyperscale customers do that. And I believe OCP as a forum can bring us together to make that change happen. So I'll, I'll leave you with this thought. And if there are any questions, we can take that. But in quick summary, storage and data are exploding. Big chunks of the data are migrating from the end devices to the cloud. They're talking about 80% of the data being in cloud in a few short years. As we build our hyperscale infrastructure, we have got to be very careful about how we choose our components, how we go about making the right choices of vendors, of systems, of components. And that means close collaboration between device manufacturers, system builders, ODMs, OEMs, and the cloud providers. It's absolutely critical that we do that. And we, together, should push the envelope on capacity, which is aerial density, scale, reliability, cost, dollar per terabytes, performance in terms of IOPS, workload ratings, and finally, security, doing it all in a secure way. I do believe that OCP as a forum can drive us to become better on all those five criteria, five parameters, and I look forward to working with you all in driving that positive change. Thank you.